بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یو ٹیوب چینل وی ٹو ڈے وی اسٹارٹ انادر نیو ٹاپک انادر ویری امپارٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ دیٹ از دی اوور ہیڈ لائن انسولیٹر سو وی آر بیسیکلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ سالڈ انسولیشن ان وچ ٹل ٹو ڈے دا نمبر آف ویڈیوز دیٹ وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ are uh, were about what were about the polymer class right so i believe we've had an enough discussion when we classified the solid insulation in the very first video so we said one is a polymer class and the other is the what the ceramic class so from now on this video is about the ceramic class so when you see Uh, 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 around yourself in the transmission system in the distribution system do you see the overhead line insulator is in the form of a ceramic class it may be porcelain it may be glass right similarly in the substations you have the the what the the protection or the insulation for the surge arresters as for the isolator switches uh, is what this is uh, in the form of ceramic porcelain right so what do we have basically is we have is uh, uh, that they are it is the most important class that you generally see in around yourself and ceramics are in the form of what ceramics are in the form of number one is porcelain and the other would be the other would be glass now we have a we have had a little discussion on this previously but so we need is what we need a mechanical strength as well as the dielectric strength why because over here it has to support the weight of the conductor as well right so basically the mechanic the porcelain has got a dielectric strength of about 60 to 70 i would just write a 60 value over here different books say different values 60 to 70 kilovolts per millimeter is the value for this one so i would write over here for this is a 90 kilovolts per millimeter and it reaches a value of 140 kilovolt per millimeter the glass value can reach up to 140 kilovolt per millimeter if i write the detail composition over here so porcelain is basically clay so number one is the clay that is the china clay which is used for manufacturing of this uh, pottery these pots etc so this is not that clay this is uh, uh, this is uh, the the kaolin which is basically a silty material a powdery sort of a material you would say so so kaolin this is this is a clay basically So you've got kaolin then the so so the detailed composition of kaolin is what i would write the detailed composition is uh, sio2 which is silicon oxide this is 62 to 70% then what do you have is uh, alumina which is aluminum oxide is al2o3 is the formula for this this is about 17 to 23% next is uh, iron oxide fe2o3 fe2o3 which is 2.5 to 5.3% and you have is calcium oxide which is basically limestone cao and the, and this is 2 to 3% so these are mixed in this proper proportion and then they are heated right whatever the furnace is it is called kiln or whatever it is so they are heated in that furnace up to 1200 or to 1400 degree centigrade and then what do you have so the processing is done and then it is naturally cooled so when it is naturally cooled it becomes hardened and it is mechanically very very strong its breaking strength is about uh, 27 to 30 mega pascal i will write the breaking strength is what is 27 to 30 mega pascal fine similarly its melting point is mentioned which is 1900 degree centigrade so melting point is a 1900 degree centigrade so i told you this is mechanically very very strong now we need two important things over here number one is the mechanical strength the other is the electrical strength so if you talk about glass the 
you know the 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 mechanical the electrical strength is comparable but you know previously the mechanical strength was not so basically the technology wasn't advanced initially when the overhead transmission insulators came into being so they were glass but then they were abundant why because of their low mechanical strengths they would break but now technology has advanced research is going on continuously so you have you have a hardened glass you have an electrical grade glass which you can use as an insulation and you know this economically the glass is very cheap as well why because this is made of silica which is according to chemists the most abundant material on the surface of earth of course it has some filler materials but you know the main ingredient is silica and so economically the glass is very cheap and if you have got a dielectric strength higher as well if you have the mechanical strength comparable as well so why not use the cheaper one so you will see that people are going back towards glass and you will see in your very own country as well that in the coming 10-15 years the porcelain insulators you will not be seeing you will be seeing glass insulators in 1980 ICE for the first time came up with the what with the electrical grade glass one other advantage of the glass is one other advantage of glass is what that it is transparent it is what it is transparent so you can see you can see what uh, you can see the voids or the micro cracks present in there you can see the voids or the micro cracks present in there so uh, and, and we've already talked about that so i've got a uh, uh, a glass insulator here with myself and the thing is uh, okay we'll come to that later so this is a glass insulator basically I will talk about it but this is just to show you the transparency that if there is any bubble etc or air cavity or a micro crack so I can physically see it over here whereas whereas if I talk about the porcelain insulator if I talk about this porcelain insulator so I cannot see it physically over here uh, you know apparently I cannot see it over here similarly this has got a very high weight you know this these two insulators that I have over here so the porcelain has got a weight of a 5 kg and the 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 glass has got a weight of a 6 kg so this is quite an ample amount of a weight let's talk about the construction of these insulators let's talk about the construction of these insulators so in the construction what do you have is you've got a metallic part and then you've got an insulating part in the metallic you've got what you have got two things number one is your cap and the second one is your pin and in between them is a sandwiched insulator if I draw it over here so if this is your cap this is your insulating material and this is your pin well I'm quite fit in drawing so anyways I have it over here to show you so this is your cap this one is your pin right and these are the sheds these are the sheds where this is the insulating material sandwiched in between them now why is this construction like this how is this like this so we will see it right yes so number one is your cap so the cap does what this is the cap the metallic cap so it is suspended from what this is the disc type insulator right so this means the suspension type so this is suspended from the tower or it has another function that depending on the voltages when you stack multiple number of units discs together in series so the the the, the pin the pin of the second would be joined over here the pin of the second would be joined over here to give you 
to give you what to give you a stack wait a minute this is this is bigger this one have a look like this so you've got two units then depending on the voltage level depending on the voltage level the number of discs would increase so the cap does what this is the housing in the tower or you know what for the second the cap the pin of the second insulator similarly the pin has to do what it has to take the conductor or it has to be a join in the what in the in the what in the in the cap of the second they are the adhesion is carried out have a look they have got no electrical contact the cap and the pin has got no electrical contact and they are sandwiched to this dielectric the adhesion is carried out by special cement that is a very hard cement called a perpex cement right yes so two metallic contacts in between is a dielectric will, will this not work as a capacitor it will so we'll see in the next video that we you know we, we we model an insulator as a capacitor now you've understood the cap you've understood the pin the next point is that when it is processed it is made highly polished it is made highly polished and clean the final finishing for the porcelain insulator is given by a compound called silicon grease now why is this why is this so this is for the for the dust to be taken off you see that on a highly polished surface the dust does not deposit and if it is present over there it can be washed away easily washed away easily number one is they can be blown away by the wind easily or they can be washed away by the rain easily in case of a highly polished in a clean surface it will not deposit these two events these two events are called natural purging events these two are called natural purging events purging events cleaning events right yes now now you see that i've made these sheds they i've not made it plain like you know over here if you see so it is not plain like this whereas i've got these sheds i've got these sheds so why is this this is to you know for the rain water this is for the rain water so that the rain water does not creep through through to the pin or to the conductor the rain water will drop the rain water will drop over here so i have increased my projected length and the rain water will drop off the vortex if you see you've got these circular sheds have a look now what is the phenomena for this 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 circular arrangement what is the phenomena for this uh, circular arrangement is that what do you have these gold the the, the circular uh, things you have these sheds so this has got a special dynamics this sheds this circular vortex has got a special dynamics this is called a vortex what is that that when wind blows when wind blows so when it comes through this insulator so the linear velocity is cut and it is converted into a circular velocity and the aerodynamics is the physics says what that when you cut a linear motion into a circular motion it the speed magnitude actually increases and the lower the radius the higher is the speed so I would consider a straight wind coming onto it. So if my wind comes, it cuts into a circular motion, its speed would increase and it would flow inside it. So any dust deposited would be washed away, would be blown away. So the insulator surface is cleaned. The insulator surface is cleaned and this is for the circular thing. Right? Yes. One other thing. One other thing that by providing these sheds, number one, you are pro producing a circular vortex. So you are you are doing what? You are providing a cleaning path. You are providing a cleaning mechanism. And the second is that you are increasing the creepage distance. 
you are increasing the creepage distance which is what which is the distance from the cap to pin so basically you would have some leakage why because the pin has got a high voltage conductor the cap is ground as at ground potential so you would have a leakage current so <clears throat> by providing these sheds basically not providing a plain area you are increasing the creepage distance which means you are increasing the surface resistance towards the flow of the leakage current so the higher the creepage distance the higher is the surface resistance which means lower would be the leakage current now I talked about over here about the cleaning and the dust. So basically if the dust deposits, the dust is a semiconductor. So if the dust deposits on this, and what happens is that it will start conducting, partial conducting, and, and basically the leakage current would increase. For example, you know, uh, if it's a highly polished surface, let's say, so what do you have if you sprinkle water on a highly polished surface, so it becomes, it, 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 you know, becomes in the droplet form, it becomes in a droplet form. So eventually you've got what? You've got the, those, those droplets and in between is a dry band. This is called dry banding. So you see what? You see small sparking in between the two dry bands. For example, if you've gone to Karachi, let's say, so over there, the 132 kV transmission line, what does it has? It, it has, the insulators have got a continuous sparking over there. That is called what? That is called scintillation. And why is that? Why is that? So it is because when, when breeze flows over there from the sea, so it basically has got that salt level. So this is called brine contamination. And because of that, you see those dust particles or those, those, those salt particles, they, they deposit on the surface of the insulator. And once they are deposited on the surface of the insulator, so, so, so the water is basically evaporated, leaving behind the salt particles. So they would act as a dust and they give rise to what? They give rise to that continuous sparking, that continuous sparking uh, uh, on the insulator surface. And that is called what? That is called scintillation. Similarly, you talk about the Gulf countries, Saudi Arabia, etc. So they have uh, those dust storms, especially in these months of June, July, August. They've got dust storms over there. So that dust gets deposited uh, on the insulator surface and giving rise to these continuous parkings. Now, how to avoid them? So, uh, you know, in a country like Pakistan, if I talk about Karachi, so we cannot afford it, is live line washing basically what do you have is uh, you have uh, those jets or pipes installed on the towers and they, they they throw a jet they throw a jet of water on the insulator to clean it basically so there is a mechanism installed they just turn it on from the stub station and it will clean all the towers but over here we cannot afford it so we can only wait for the national natural purging events in saudi arabia and in the english countries europe so they've got this live line washing and live line so they do not cut the electrical power rather the power is being transmitted and it is being washed at the same time so this is called live line washing and this live line washing is carried out as a routine maintenance fine yes now i've got some other terms which i would uh, uh, want to study over here is so number one if i talk about is uh, are you are you done with the construction are you done with the construction you've got a cap you've got a pin in between the dielectric now have a look this is also not a plane surface this is also an aerodynamic surface so having a slope of about five degrees the book says so if it's about a slope of five degrees so again this is uh, helps in the uh, purpose of cleaning the sheds you have understood the, the the whole structure you have understood now i tell you that this one disc this one disc basically is used for a voltage of an 11 kV. This voltage is used for a voltage of 11 kV, 11 kilo volt. Now if I write over here, so and every insulator disc has got its own BIL, which means it has got its own basic insulation level. It has got its basic insulation level or some would say that this is called a basic impulse level 
basic impulse level now what is the difference so i will tell you so i told you that one disc is designed for 11 kv so this is my basic insulation level so let's suppose i need it for a 33 kv let's say it is not like this but for 33 kv i would need three discs fine yes but what is the basic impulse level so you know we talk about this is one is the power frequency voltages the other is that there there could be a catastrophe on the transmission line the catastrophic events and those are what those are in the form of lightning or they are in the form of uh, voltage they are in the form of voltage surges so the catastrophe is in the form of a voltage surge which comes either from the lightning or it comes from the switching surges so switching is from the opening and closing of circuit breakers either intentionally for load shedding or unintentionally uh, uh, in the case of a fault and similarly when lightning strikes so it has got a huge amount of a voltage in mega volts so now will my will my voltage uh, will uh, my insulation be able to sustain it so I don't know I don't know so that catastrophe is basically defined in terms of the basic impulse level and what is a basic impulse level so basically you provide a voltage of magnitude 10 times 10 times 10 impulses are provided 10 impulses are provided are applied to the insulation which is of a magnitude 10 times is operating voltage which is 11 kV and those 10 impulses are placed 10 seconds apart so this is called the basic impulse level which means for instance you've got your 11 kV so the magnitude would be 10 times 110 kV would be applied to this 11 kV disc 10 times and each interval 10 seconds apart and that will define your basic impulse level for this particular operating voltage which is 11 kV so which means that the disc that I have over here the impulse level is 110 kV the insulation level is 11 kV now why these 10 impulses so I don't know why these 10 seconds apart so so to, to you know uh, decay any charges present over there I told you this is working as a capacitor so they are given some time to decay the charges present fine this is the basic insulation level versus the basic impulse level next you have is a breakdown versus flash over uh, terms are used breakdown versus flash over so basically the flash over is a surface phenomena and by surface phenomena i mean what that this basically happens through the air this basically happens through the air now what do i have is if you have got an insulation string string is what that i have combined a number of units for a higher voltage let's suppose for 33 kv if my one is 11 so for 33 i need three roughly here is my conductor and this is my ground structure so the breakdown is what that basically breakdown is the is the is the finishing or the death of the insulator the finishing of the insulating properties which means the high current has passed through this insulating material whereas for flash over for flash over the case is that it will pass over the surface it will pass over the surface which means through the air basically so flash over is one of the you know important phenomena for what for the single line to ground fault mostly the single line to ground faults are due to this flash overs so which means that if you operate the circuit breakers after 5 to 10 time uh, 5 to 10 minutes so it will you know operate but if it does not after two to three attempts if it does not operate then you have to do what how many tries can you give two three not more than that right so then what do you do you will you will uh, 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 do what you will do you will patrol your line right and these line super internets they know the vulnerable neighbor points they will take you to the point right these sdos they do not know the line super internets they know the vulnerable points and they will take you and if this is not a flash over then they say the disc is puncture a disc is puncture they use a word and that puncture is that the disc has breakdown that that is for the breakdown 
right yes now so flash over basically is the saving of your insulator string it would be through the through the the air but more or less it will it will leave uh, you know uh, 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 your surface carbonized the, the surface becomes carbonized of this uh, uh, of this insulating of this insulator so providing a track a track is formed a conducting track is formed and with the time this track increases and we've seen in the tracking process eventually a time will come that the gap is bridged and the breakdown occurs but although it takes time Similarly, I'm talking about the capacitance again and again. So the capacitance is normally from 30 picofarad to 40 picofarads. And this is uh, and this is written on the insulator material over here on this disk. It is not written. Fine. Yes. So I believe that is it. So I finish this video over here. Breakdown versus flash over. Flash over is one of the main event in the single line to ground fault. I think I had a point over here. I don't know. A flash over happens, flash over. Okay. Flash over is a temporary line to ground fault, whereas the uh, uh, the the failure or the breakdown is a permanent fault. So, anyways, I I don't think we're done with the introduction. Porcelain versus glass composition, shape is done. Karachi example, basic insulation level is done. Uh, carbonized surface and. Uh, and one other thing, the color of the insulator. So you would have seen, you would have seen that sometimes you've got this gray insulator, sometimes you've got those maroon. Over here, I've got this gray. So basically, the current, the, the, the color does not have anything to do with the technical side. It may be just provided to give you, you know, uh, uh, um, something in contrast with the background. The 500 kV uh, uh, is the Canadian system and I believe for that the gray is used. 132 kV is the British system, the normal uh, and for that I believe the maroon is used. The color does not have anything to do with it. The color does not have anything to do with it. One thing is that I talked over here about the surges which are the lightning and switching and I designed my insulator for let's say if the operating voltage is 11 so it can sustain a voltage of 110 kV but the thing is that these surges come in the form of a megavolt of a voltage we'll see in the lightning so will my insulation sustain it so over here I don't know maybe it sustains maybe it does not over here i don't know but when we see the next videos inshallah when we talk about the lightning surges and we go to insulation coordination we'll make sure that i save my string i save my insulation string and the 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 insulator is saved no matter whatever the voltage is it would be in megavolts it cannot sustain it till now till my knowledge I can have 110 kV but we'll see that we will save it from megawatts of a voltage I believe this video was interesting this was a little introduction the general construction overview etc in the next video we see how to mathematically analyze it how to how to do the mathematical analysis of an insulator in the form of a string Till the next video, goodbye.